Yes, this card is in fact real and it's coming really soon since it's being teased by a lot of YouTubers and key personalities over on Twitter. The Titan RTX may not be a card that will be designed with only gaming in mind, but would have other purposes such as content creation, AI, deep neural learning, and more, and all at quite a hefty price point. This all broke free when NVIDIA's yet to be released Titan graphics card based on the Turing GPU architecture had been pictured. The card which was pictured within a PC built by Gavin Free, one of the creators of the slow-mo guys on YouTube. Look, let's be honest, you gotta love the face that the cat's making in this picture. It's hilarious. The text along the picture reads that the PC, particularly the GPU, had been upgraded, which we can tell from the picture which graphics card has been upgraded with as it clearly reads, Titan. Now being a top tier YouTube creator, it's easy to tell why Gavin got his card as Nvidia has previously sent out unreleased Quadro graphics cards to content creators. Take for instance, the Quadro M6000, which was pictured when posted by Deadmau5 over on his Instagram a few years back prior to its launch. It's also worth noting that the previous Titan class graphics card, the Titan V, was pictured and leaked within a PC by an intern at Nvidia. The Titan V launched in December, which was months after the leak happened back in May of 2017. There are a few noteworthy things about this card. First off is that it's using a similar cooler shroud as the GeForce RTX 20 series graphics cards, and the shroud looks shinier, but that could be just the angle that we're looking at the card, for the picture isn't very clear. In the latest clear shots of the card, we can see that the gold colored shroud, which is similar to the color that they used with the Titan V, since we've seen that color used before. The card also makes use of two 8-pin power connectors and we can see the Titan logo on the side has blue LEDs instead of the green ones featured on the GeForce RTX 20 series cards. The card is also missing the GeForce branding which is something we should expect from the Titan series about now. Nvidia may use known content creators to hype up their upcoming graphics cards and it's a really good idea if you think about it from a marketing perspective. But then again, we can't really say much now unless we get more details. As far as its specifications, Nvidia has their Quadro RTX 8000 series with more cores and memory compared to their flagship RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. The card rocks with the full Turing TU-102 GPU with 4608 CUDA cores, 576 Tensor cores, and up to 48 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory and with up to 10 gig arrays worth of ray tracing performance. However, that card does cost $10,000 in the US, so Titan would definitely cost less considering we will see lower VRAM and, you know, to conserve cost. But still considering the price of the consumer graphics RTX cards, the prosumer aimed Titan Turing would cost probably somewhere around the ballpark of $3,000 US. But that is the same price as the Titan V. Not to be left out of the news cycle, AMD is in this one as well. AMD's mainstream AM4 platform is here to stay, and while it may get updated features and new chipsets in the run, it will support AMD's current and next generation Ryzen processors. Now a new rumor has popped up over on Gamer.com.tw where a slide lists down the upcoming X570 PCH along with its significant features. And one slide that was allegedly presented by Gigabyte, it is mentioned that Matisse, the codename for the upcoming Ryzen family, will be getting a new chipset known as the X570. The entire Ryzen family of processors is forward compatible with the new chipset, while the new processors will be backwards compatible with the older chipsets, but you're going to be but if you're going to get the best feature support for the new Ryzen CPUs, it's better to get a new X570 motherboard. I, for one, will probably be staying on my X370. Crosshair 6 has a lot of USB ports, and that's what I use the most. As we saw with X470, there will be few features for the Ryzen 2000 series processors, which only supported by the new motherboards, such as Precision Boost Overdrive and XFR 2.0. There's no doubt that AMD's Zen 2 based Ryzen mainstream processor family would come with new features, but the main highlight that is mentioned within the slides is support for PCIe Gen 4. The slide calls Matisse an all PCIe Gen 4 solution, which means this would most probably be the first consumer platform to feature support for the new PCIe standard. The launch of the X570 chipset and respective motherboards is pitted for Computex 2019, which makes a lot of sense. As the biggest consumer PC hardware trade show, AMD may hold an event there while they announce their new Ryzen 3000 series families. At the previous Computex event, AMD unveiled their Ryzen Threadripper 2000 series processor 
and this would allow motherboard manufacturers to showcase their new X570 solutions to attendees of the event. One detail that is not mentioned is that if a Computex 2019 mid of 2019 launch is planned for the Ryzen mainstream, then Epic Rome processors will be the first launch on the new 7 nanometer process node would be arriving earlier than that. The Ryzen 3000 series processors aim to feature key IPC efficiency improvements over the existing Zen Plus parts, which are basically optimized versions of Zen 1 parts based on the 12 nanometer process node. TSMC's 7 nanometer process would allow AMD to squeeze out more clocks than the global foundries made Ryzen 1000 and Ryzen 2000 series parts, allowing for higher performance to end users. We don't have more details, but we do expect more to come around the you know, time of CES 2019 next year. Now, most people think that Zen 2 is nothing more than a generational frequency IPC bump, but that is a very wrong assumption as Zen 2 as an architecture is entirely overhauled. The jump from Zen to Zen Plus was one incremental step. The jump from Zen Plus to Zen 2 aims to be a revolutionary step. Yes, the rumors claim that the IPC improvement and higher clock speeds are there. They also mention that those are higher than expected on very early engineering samples. This shows the final retail samples could be more than 15% IPC jump versus where we've been at for quite a while. But it doesn't end there. Zen 2 is also aiming to fix and improve upon the memory controller by reducing the memory delay and allowing better support for higher frequency and lower latency memory. Now this is great considering the consumer PCs have already have access to fast memory, but it's also crucial for the server market, which currently relies on higher bandwidth access directly from the system memory. Epic Naples disrupted the performance charts with stellar bandwidth increases and reducing delay could get it up to speed to competitive Xeon platforms too. The other thing being talked about is AVX support. It is said that Zen 2 won't support AVX 512, but will definitely get an AVX performance enhancement compared to what Zen 1 can do right now. Clock speeds also get a huge jump thanks to both the TSMC 7 nanometer node and revamped architecture design, and one could also expect refined boost frequencies, allowing for higher XFR and precision boost limits. Now I realize on both of those topics that's a lot to digest, especially with the upcoming Zen and the X570 platform. Love to hear what you're most looking forward to. I can imagine there's a lot of people that while we'd like to see the Titan RTX, I don't think there's a whole lot of people that's actually going to be in the market for it that would be here on our channel. But love to hear your thoughts on that one and what you think about X570 as well as Zen 2 improvements. Is if you were on a first generation Ryzen and you were presented with the opportunity to get a 3000 series chip and put it in that motherboard or would you feel the need to upgrade your motherboard? I for one will be staying on the same board and looking to upgrade the chip on my workstation. Love to hear your thoughts on that one down in the comment section below as well as links to both articles being discussed. And this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and we will catch you all in the next video.